Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel and welcome to another What's For Dinner. I share these videos every Friday morning, 8 a.m. Central Time. And this week I'm gonna be sharing three meals that I made for my family. So if you like content like that, please hit the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the bell so you'll always be notified when I upload a new video and give me a thumbs up, that really helps out my channel. And without further ado, let's get into the video. Tonight we are going to make a Mexican cornbread casserole, or some people call it cowboy cornbread. Uh, my cousin, actually, Jennifer, told me about this. She has made it, I don't know what's on my burner, but it sure is smoking. Anyways, um, she's made this a few times, and so I was like, I want to make this. So I'm starting out with, I only have a pound of hamburger meat. She said she would do like a pound and a half. This is what I had. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, season my hamburger meat with some garlic and onion powder and a little salt and pepper too. I just always do this every time I'm making any kind of meat. Okay y'all, so I'm gonna go ahead and get this meat browned up and then I will come back in just a second. Okay y'all, while the meat is cooking, I'm gonna mix up our cornbread and what I'm using are two boxes of the Jiffy Corn Myth Morph blah, blah 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 blah. Two packages of this Jiffy Cornbread mix. So um, we're gonna do that real quick. On this cornbread, since we're doubling it, I need to put two eggs in here. And then we also need two thirds a cup of milk. That's all I'm saying. Before you get all, you know what I'm saying? Because. I know, I'm just saying. Yeah. Now we're gonna mix this up. And I'm gonna go ahead and preheat my oven to 400 because we're gonna follow the um, instructions for the cornbread. And you could probably, if you don't wanna use Jiffy, you could use your own homemade cornbread mix. I also was looking at some uh, like on um, Pinterest and some people use like the Mexican style cornbread but I'm just doing it the way that she makes it because she says it's really good that way and I believe her kids even eat it and they're kind of picky. <laughs> so Jennifer, I know you're watching. You know it's true. So if they eat it, then I know it's gotta be really good. Okay y'all, I moved my meat off of the burner because our stove, I think I've mentioned many times that I want a new stove because it's so hard to regulate the heat on the stove. So maybe eventually. Um, I'm, I removed it for now because it was just staying too hot. I'm gonna add in, uh, my cousin says to add a package of taco seasoning, but I always use this um, Fiesta brand of taco seasoning and it calls for one tablespoon for one pound of meat and then she adds a little bit of water she said to it just so it has some moisture in it and so i'm going to um i'm just going to kind of pour i'm just guessing i don't know maybe it might be around a quarter or so let's see how that looks just, just to kind of get that all mixed up and then we're going to start adding in our other ingredients i sent her a text <laughs> just because i was I wasn't sure if I needed to drain because we're going to add in some canned goods and stuff. If I needed to drain the juice off or leave the juice in because I really didn't know. So, I'm going to let this set for just a few minutes until she lets me know and then I will come back and let y'all know. Okay, y'all. Now we're going to start adding stuff. I'm going to start first just kind of... I'm going to start with one can of each thing. And then if it looks like it could use both, I will do two. Uh, two cans. So first I have a can of pinto beans and I went ahead and drained the juice out of them or the liquid out of them. I have a can of whole kernel corn that I drained. We're going to add it in. I have one can of Rotel. I also drained it. And then a can of cream style corn. Of course you don't drain it because it's cream style. I'm gonna mix this up and just kind of see how it looks. Hmm. 
I don't think I need any more corn. I'm gonna go ahead and add another can of beans, just a second. Here's my second can of beans. And I'm gonna go ahead and add one more of these cans of the cream style, just to give it some more liquid in there. I've never had this before, so I'm not really sure what it's supposed to be like. And just because I, I don't know, I just feel like adding a little more taco seasoning. So that's the good thing about this is I can just kind of sprinkle some in. And then the last thing was, she said to, she said to put like an inch and a half of Velveeta cheese, which I'm assuming she meant like off the block. I don't know. Probably what I have here might be about four ounces. So I'm going to cut this into some little pieces and we're going to add it. And I'm going to move this back to the heat. We'll turn the heat back up and we will start melting, kind of getting this cheese and everything melted in here and get this warmed through. And then we're going to put this in a casserole dish and start cooking it. But my oven, like I said, is preheated to 400 because that's what my cornbread is supposed to cook at. And yeah, so I'll be back in just a little bit. Okay, y'all, this has been mix or simmering for a while. And I'm just trying to make sure that all, because I can still see some chunks of this Velveeta. I just want to make sure it's good and mixed in. And even though I uh, drained off that liquid, it's very liquidy, I guess, too, from the, probably from the cream style corn and then from uh, the Velveeta. But I think this looks pretty good. So, I, uh, oops, sorry, y'all. So, right over there, I have my 9 by 13 inch pan, and I'm going to spray it really good with some nonstick cooking spray. And then I'm going to start adding this in. This is pretty full. And next I have my cornbread mix that I, or two packages of cornbread mix. And I'm just gonna kind of, I guess, put it over the top. And mine kind of thickened up, I guess, because it was setting for a little while, so. I hope I'm doing this right. I've never had this, and I've never seen it done, so. bigger pan I wish I would have used it but I did not know this was going to be so full so because I'm scared it's going to overflow in my in my oven I'm going to put a cookie sheet underneath it so I'll have a cookie sheet over here I'm going to because this is so full I'm just going to set it on that cookie sheet and stick it into the oven oh it's so heavy Okay, the according to the directions on the cornbread, it's said to cook for like um, 18 to 20 minutes. I'm going to let it cook for about, oh, I'm going to say about 13 minutes. And then I'm going to check it because we're going to also sprink, sprinkle some cheese on top when it's getting close to being done. So I'll let y'all know in just a second. Y'all, I thought I was recording this part and I wasn't. Anyways, um, let me zoom in there. And um, when the cornbread is just about done, you want to sprinkle it with some cheddar cheese and let that melt and finish cooking. Okay, y'all. Got it done. And we're about to plate this up and we will let you know what we think. Hey, Courtney. How it did was, you like the food? It was good. Um, it wasn't her favorite thing, I don't think, right? Because you didn't like the tomatoes. I don't like the tomatoes. I would have ate quite a bit if if it wasn't for the tomatoes and so. she's not feeling too well she has a cough okay Bryce, what about you <coughs> pretty good um after you mixed it up together was it yeah, better and i put hot sauce in it yeah yeah <laughs> okay adrian how did you like it sorry there's hair in my mouth uh, okay i liked it and um <laughs> yeah it was good and tiny buns also 
he wanted a honey bun. <laughs> Anyways, I went back and got a little bit more. I added some sour cream to mine. Ross added some hot sauce Other or than that, whatever. It was good. Yep. I think it was good. <coughs> Hey y'all, welcome to tonight's What's For Dinner. Tonight I'm gonna to be making um, some bacon wrapped uh, cream cheese stuffed chicken. So I have some chicken breasts, I'm not sure why that one's like that. Um, I have a few chicken breasts here that I've been thawing out and I'm going to um, go ahead and kind of cut these in half and get them to the size that I want and then we're going to uh, stuff them with a cream cheese mixture and wrap them in some bacon and we're going to uh, bake these. So I'm just gonna get this all kind of prepared. Okay y'all, I have my baking sheet. I'm gonna go ahead and spray this with some cooking spray. Okay y'all, so next what we're gonna do, I bought this chive and onion cream cheese spread from Walmart. And we're gonna use this to stuff our chicken. But I also wanted to add a little flavoring and so I have this Kinder's or Kinder's, I'm not sure how you say it. I have the blackened uh, rub seasoning that I'm gonna put on the chicken also. So I have my chicken here and we're going to Actually, you know what? I'm gonna get a little bowl and put some of this in here. That way, if I don't use it all, I'm not like contaminating it going in and out with this raw chicken. So I'm gonna wash my hands and do that. Okay, y'all, um, I'm fixing to stuff our chicken with uh, this chive and onion cream cheese spread from Walmart. And I'm not sure exactly how much I'll use. So instead of cross contaminating it, going back and forth to the chicken, I'm just putting a little bit in this bowl here, I'm just kind of stir it up a little. And um, I've got my baking dish here, and I'm just gonna start out by putting a little bit, and I'm not real sure how much. I'm gonna get a butter knife. I'm gonna get a little butter knife and rub this, oops, rub that inside of the chicken. And I gotta get my bacon ready. So I'm gonna go ahead and get some of this out because I don't know exactly how many pieces either I'm gonna be using. So I will be back y'all, I'm not very prepared. Okay, now I'm gonna roll up our chicken and I'm going to sprinkle some of this Kinder seasoning on it. And then I'm gonna take a piece of bacon and wrap it around the chicken. Cure it with a toothpick. Okay, so there's the first one. So I'm just going to continue to do that with the rest. y'all I ended up having two more or I had some more chicken I bought and so I cut it in half and to make two more of these just to make sure I had enough and did the same thing I'm gonna sprinkle just a just go over a little bit more with a little more of the seasoning and we're gonna stick this in the oven I have it preheated to 375 and we're gonna let these cook for about 35 minutes but we're gonna flip them over about halfway through okay y'all the next thing I'm gonna do is make some mashed potatoes in my instant pot and I have some yellow potatoes and I didn't even peel these. I'm just gonna make them with the peel on. I think it'll be good. And I'm gonna try to just cut these up in similar, uh, close to similar sizes. But right now I'm just quartering. I'm gonna cut off this end of this one. If I see any spots that look kinda rough or something, I might just cut them off. Okay, 
y'all. I have a cup of water that I'm putting in here, and I'm gonna add a little bit of salt. This is my first time making mashed potatoes in here, so I may have cut them a little bit too big, but we'll see. Or not too big, too small, sorry. Okay. Put it on. And we're going to set this on high pressure for 10 minutes. And then we will let this cook. And then once it uh, is done, we'll do a quick release. Okay, the recipe said when they get about half to the halfway mark, you're gonna wanna flip these over. So I am going to flip them, which I guess I'm too pickled, just have to poke in. <laughs> We're gonna flip them over. Oh, that may be my problem, my toothpick. And we're gonna let those continue to cook. Okay, y'all, I just checked the chicken. You can see, well, it doesn't wanna zoom in. But anyways, I'm going to now turn it on broil. And then I'm going to broil it for a few minutes and then flip it, just try to uh, brown up the, or crisp up the bacon. And, sorry, okay. And our potatoes are done, so. We're gonna let all that pressure off. And in the meantime, I have some of these Sister Schubert rolls that I'm gonna put in my toaster oven. And they only take about five to 10 minutes on 350, and we're gonna have those too. Okay, y'all, I'm going to uh, flip these some because I think they're starting to, to do what they need to do, so. Next time I'll make sure I put the Toothpicks in better because it's kind of hard to flip them with those toothpicks. Okay, let it go a little more. Now the potatoes, we are going to, actually now that I read it, uh, well, I don't want to leave that water in there. Dang it, I can't get them out without them all falling down in that water. Just, I'm going to <laughs> lift these out, or at least the ones that will stay on here. Which probably is there gonna be many? Oh, oh man. Okay. <laughs> um, these others, I'm going to drain the rest of the water off of them. We're going to mash these potatoes up. And I'm also going to add in some butter and some cream. Ah! <laughs> My fire alarms are going off. Why? I guess because of this. The smoking. Come on, hurry. Watch out, get back. What's what? What's this? What's this, Mom? That's bad stuff. Like what? Okay, y'all. I guess the bacon <laughs> in the oven. Um, okay. I'm gonna go ahead and add in some butter. <laughs> that was too funny. That was that was a real life moment, y'all. Real life there. I haven't made the smoke detectors go off in wow a long time. It's been a while, probably since I burnt. Uh, some tea one time that I was cooking and then I caught part of the stove, well, a, a towel caught on fire by the <laughs> on our oven. Yeah, that was a long time ago. I think it was before I ever even made videos on YouTube. <laughs> it happens. And I just put four tablespoons of butter. I'm probably gonna put some more in a minute because I like a lot of butter. I think, and I'm okay if the, uh, if they're a little bit chunky, so. Now I'm just gonna kinda start 
kind of stirring that in some more. Add a little bit more butter. I'll add a couple more tablespoons, and then we're going to add in a little bit of sour cream and some heavy whipping cream. That's what I like to put in my potatoes. I think it tastes really good. I learned that from my mother-in-law and my husband. Okay, let me add in some of this sour cream. I add in a good spoonful. And then I just have the heavy whipping cream. Oh, sorry. <laughs> We're going to add some of that in, just kind of guess at it. And we'll just kind of... Sometimes when I get to be, get to doing like a bunch of stuff, oh, I get frazzled, I guess you could say. Does anybody say that word anymore? Something my mom would say. I get frazzled and then I'm also going to add in some salt and pepper I just have not done that yet other than the salt that was in the water when we were cooking the potatoes just a little bit more there get them get them real creamy and I was going to make another side y'all and I don't know, I didn't. So we're having to do mashed potatoes with this and a row, which I'm gonna get those out now. I'm gonna add just a little bit of salt and a little bit. Kiki, what? can you come help me get the table and stuff set, please? And now those are done. Now those are done. Here is the chicken. Here's the chicken. And there are the rolls. And there are the rolls. So we'll get everything set on the table and we'll come back in just a second. Hey, Adrian. How do you like to not supper? He didn't like the cream cheese in the middle, so he was good. trying to wipe his out. It's good and good. It's good? Yeah. It was just too much. His, I think, was one of the ones I put a lot in. And then I started putting less because mine... Didn't have as much really in it, and I wish it would have had more. <laughs> okay, Courtney, how is it to you? Like it? Good deal. And brass. The master. So it gets the brass's thumbs up seal of approval. I'll one for daddy. He'll probably go back and get another one. See? There's I'll get one for daddy because he probably would say it. Yes, he would. Daddy's working, but he'll be home tomorrow. He will? And we have those. Yay. Those Bisque or rolls are so good, aren't they, y'all? Mm -hmm. All right, y'all. Another good supper. Mm -hmm.